Hi folks, in this video we're going to take a look at the symbolism and analysis um, takeaways for Edwige Don't Declos, A Wall of Fire Rising. Before we get into our literary element of symbolism, we do need to establish a few things about the story's historical and cultural context. Uh, this is an image of the shanty towns that uh, Guy is referring to in the story, the narrator is referring to, and what you had following the Haitian Revolution was a lot of um, formerly emancipated people living in these sort of very destitute, very impoverished collections of, of shacks, and, and that is where Guy and Lily are raising their son. Now, the story is set in Haiti, and the context of this is really important, so you need, a little, know, you need to know a little bit about the Haitian Revolution. In the late 1700s, Haiti was one of the wealthiest part of the Americas, and the French colony of Saint-Dominique produced 60% of the world's coffee and sugar. Haiti was um, made uh, France, in particular, very wealthy because of um, enslaved labor, uh, and most of this wealth came from sugar. It was horribly brutal enterprise. It was notorious, you know, slavery is horrifying in all contexts, but in Haiti, it was particularly brutal. The life expectancy of an enslaved person born into the colonies at this time was 16 years old. Uh, eventually, enslaved people in Haiti began to organize and work towards their own self-emancipation. And this is the historical context that precedes the story, of course. This is before Guy and Lily's life. But this movement of emancipation began by Bukman and Boyce Cayman. The enslaved people of Haiti began to set fires to plantations, lots and lots and lots of fires. And the <clears throat> premise here was that the enterprise of slavery cannot exist without its infrastructure. If you don't have plantations, um, you can't have enslavement. And, and that was the goal. Um, they wanted to destroy the economy. Uh, without them, the institution of slavery couldn't continue. And the French would send ships to Haiti, but they were also at war with Spain and Britain at the time. And they eventually realized that they were going to lose. The The slave uprising was going to triumph. So they abolished slavery. But then Napoleon comes into power and tries to reinstate slavery. And that doesn't work. The, the freed people were not having it. Um, but then they drive the French out and declare independence, which is, of course, this wonderful sort of symbol of of um, you know, claiming your own dignity. But at the same time, France instituted a number of tax and uh, financial um, implications on Haiti. And they became a very, very, uh, they, they essentially got screwed over by France and became a very, very poor independent nation after that. So Guy and Lily are living in this very impoverished area, and they're living in a shanty town, which is essentially what happened after the revolution. The description of their home illustrate that sort of extreme poverty that they're living in. And you want to think about how this affects the characters, and do Lily and Guy have different outlooks on this situation? So the external conflicts in the story, of course, are this level of destitution. There's not a lot for Guy to do to get out of this level of destitution. Um, there's not the the jobs are in control of the sugar mill uh, there's not a lot for him to do to change his family circumstances and these are circumstances beyond his control he cannot um you know as much as he wants to there's nothing he can do about the time and the place that he's in but the internal conflicts are also very important so you want to think about what sort of conflict he's having internally what does he want and what is working against him so guy of course wants a better life. He wants to provide for his family, but if you look at the story, there's a uh, this is this is much deeper than that for him. So he says, "You know that question I asked you before, how a man is remembered after he's gone? I know the answer now. I know because I remember my father, who was a very poor struggling man on his life. I remember him as a man that I would never want to be." So Guy is struggling with the fact that this is, um, you know, a cycle. This is something that um, his father struggled with and he didn't want to do that. And now here he is raising his son uh, in the same sort of stuck situation. So in a lot of ways the you know, the Haitian people have gained their freedom, but they are still um, trapped by this economic system of poverty that has left them, you know, without many options to improve their situation. Um, so there's the question, of course, of literal freedom versus, um, you know, symbolic freedom. Does he have the symbolic freedom to take control of his own life? And, and Guy's internal struggle is that no, he doesn't. 
Now, let's talk about some of the symbolic and um, symbolic elements and illusions in the story. Why is the play so important? The play is uh, by Judy McMahon, who was, if you'll remember, a leader of the Haitian slave revolution. And you'll remember, uh, this is a conversation between Lily and Guy and Guy Jr. And Lily says, remember what you are, a great rebel leader. Remember it is the revolution. And Guy asks, do we want him to be all of that? Tell us the other thing that is on your mind. And then freedom, shouts the boy as he quickly quickly slips into the role. Louder, urges Lily. Freedom is on my mind. Why don't you start, son? If you don't, we'll never get to that other thing that we have on our minds. So this idea of freedom and this idea of revolution and overcoming is what every character in this story wants. They want a sense of freedom in a number of different ways. And Guy in particular, who is our focal character, he wants freedom from all of these, you know, circumstances that have put him in this situation. So the play, of course, represents freedom. That is what the play, that is what um, Judy Bookman stands for in the Haitian culture. So the play is a symbol of freedom and Guy Jr. is, is, um, exalting freedom by his role in it. He's taking part in that sort of um, glory of that tradition. This is the, uh, these are the lines from the poem, A Wall of Fire Rising, that the story is named after. I want to take a closer look at these so we can talk about the symbolism here. It says, a wall of fire is rising and in the ashes I see the bones of my people. Not only those people who, whose dark hollow faces I see daily in the fields, but all those souls who have gone ahead to haunt my dreams. At night, I relive once more the last caresses from the hand of a loving father, a valiant love, a beloved friend. So this play, this is about uh, you know pre-revolution times when they talk about in the fields they are talking about enslavement. But if you think about this in the context of the situation Guy is in, his people are still in the fields. They are still working themselves to the bone. Um, their souls have long gone ahead to haunt my dreams. So, you know, there's still this sort of symbolic sense of, of oppression going on that is preventing them from that true freedom. And the wall of fire rising, of course, is a reference to the fires that were set during the Haitian Revolution. And here's the second half of the poem. There is so much sadness in the faces of my people. I have called on their gods. Now I call on our gods. I call on our young. I call on our old. I call on our mighty and the weak. I call on everyone and anyone so that we shall all let out one piercing cry that we may either live freely or we should die. And again, this is about the revolution. This is a, you know, this is a battle cry for, um, you know, the enslaved people in Haiti to claim their own freedom. But if you read this in the context of Guy's situation, there is so much sadness in the faces of his people. And he is wanting something different. He's wanting um, to live freely or he should die. And you know, of course, with the end of the story, the ultimate choice that he makes with that. Now, of course, this A Wall of Fire Rising has this dual symbolism of this pre-emancipation um, time and post-emancipation time. But you want to think about this symbolic meaning and what it would mean for this family in Haiti, whose culture is built on this powerful revolution. You know, Judy Bookman would be equivalent to our our founding fathers, our revolutionaries that, you know, um, laid the framework for our nation. And in Haiti, this would be incredibly meaningful in terms of freedom. But we also want to think about the symbolism of fire. Fire has conventional symbolism in literature a number of different ways. So in Greek myth, fire is a tool that helps build civilization, which of course is true in the story. Fire is what created their civilization outside of the slave enterprise. But in early Christian mythology, um, a fire is associated with the pits of hell and punishment for sins, which of course has meaning in that, um, you know, it's purifying that plantation system, but it also becomes this sort of, um, dual meaning and that there is punishment, figurative punishment happening to the characters. In Buddhism, the Sermon of, of on Furs is about uh, liberating oneself from suffering through detaching oneself from one's senses, 
including one's desires, passion, hatred, and delusion. So this idea of purification, this idea of purifying yourself from your worldly suffering is uh, a meaning that we get out of Buddhism. And in literature, fire is seen as both powerful destruction and refinement and salvation. So not only is this a force of destruction, this is also a force of purification. Think of the phoenix, right? It rises from the ashes of the fire. And that in a lot of ways is what this wall of fire means symbolically and all of these have symbolic relevance and the ones that you choose are going to be ones that have the most um are is going to be the ones that determine the meaning of the story for you now the symbol the sugar mill is also symbolic um, the sugar mill is in control of the economic situation you know you it, they don't have um enough jobs and so people are sort of fighting to work there and this is the only way to sort of make a decent living um and you'll notice when they talk about the sugar mill um the this is where the balloon is the balloon is trapped by those who is is behind a fence by those who own the sugar mill and the sugar mill also corresponds to the sugar fields of the slave enterprise you know this is a symbolic um, institution that is in many ways still oppressing them from true freedom economically. Like, yes, they are no longer enslaved, but they are trapped by what options are available to them from the sugar mill. And the sugar mill, in a lot of ways, becomes their economic master. Um, and Guy wants to put his son on the hiring list, but Lily doesn't want that. And you want to think about what those things could mean about how they want, how they see improving their son's life. So what are the other symbolic meanings to these things? Uh, Guy says, I was born in the shadow, shadow of that sugar mill. And yes, he means literally, but also the sugar mill is symbolic of this sort of larger um, enslavement enterprise. And he was born in the shadow of that too. There was, there's no escaping the culture and the circumstances that he was born into. And the sugar mill is a symbol of that oppression of that um of that master oppressing him now what are the other possible symbolic reasons so guy says if my father had me put on the list don't you think i'd be working whereas lily says for a young boy to be on that list might influence his destiny so guy is seeing this in a very practical way in terms of we have to change his life and that means that we have to you know, think ahead and we have to, and this is the only way to break the cycle. Whereas Lily says, um, you know, that that's not what we need to do. We need to give him the freedom to choose his own path. Um, and this is the conflict between the, the parents in the story, whether or not how to set their son up for a better life is something that is bleak and they have trouble coming to, coming to agreement on. The major symbol in this story, of course, is the balloon. What does the balloon symbolize in this story? Well, a number of things. The balloon belongs to the Assad family who occasionally fly it over shanty, the shanty town. Remember the Assad family owns the sugar mill. So of course the balloon is them you know, is a symbol of their freedom. It's a symbol of their ability to control and lord over these sort of people in the shanty town who are struggling to survive. And Guy can only explore his fascination with it as he sits behind a chain link fence out of his reach. Um, so as he thinks about the balloon, he says, I watched the owner for a long time and I think I can fly that balloon. The first time I saw him do it, it looked like a miracle, but the more and more I saw it, the more ordinary it became. So the balloon is a symbol of his freedom. And as he watches, you know, his oppressors, some him symbolic oppressors flying it, it seems miraculous. It seems like something, um, so far beyond his reach, but the more and more he sees it, the more normal it seems to him, the more attainable it seems to him. And so the balloon, of course, is a symbol of his escape from this system and his freedom as a man, as a father, as a Haitian. <clears throat> Here is another line from the story. If you were to take that balloon and fly away, would you take me and the boy? From Lily. First, you don't want me to take it, and now you want to go? I just want to know that when you dream, me and the boy were always in your dreams. So Guy wants to escape these circumstances that are oppressing his family. But Lily, on the other hand, um, has a different focus, which is, of course, that their family is together. And the question, of course, becomes, does Guy want to fly away from his family or fly away from his circumstances? And that's a question for you to answer as the, uh, with your own critical analysis. But this is sort of the, the ultimate 
question of the story. And then you want to think, of course, what is symbolic to the to Guy's final act? Why does he do what he does at the end of the story? Does he get his freedom? What is he escaping from? Is he escaping from anything or is he giving up? And one thing to think about is if the, the balloon is a symbol of freedom and in his last moments, Guy takes it for himself and he flies over the town in a symbolic way that of course means that he's getting a taste of freedom. And you might wanna ask yourself as you answer this question, once he has a taste of freedom, could he ever go back to looking at the balloon from behind a fence?